think that they're flying rats because they see the feral pigeons in the path and people get the wrong impression. An attraction, the closeness of them, that you can actually be part of them, you can hold them, you can actually talk to them if you want to. I first ran into pigeons when I was at state school. A classmate of mine, his father had pigeons and they, they used to bring these little baby ones to school, give them off to all the kids. So I, I got two and took them home and mum let me keep them. I've been a fancier since 1956, which was a long time ago. Domestic pigeons are really a nice, clean bird. They come in a lot of variations in shapes and sizes and, and they're very easy to look after. I got involved in, with showing pigeons very early in my life, you know. I showed everywhere uh, in Australia, I've been over there, I've judged overseas, done all that sort of thing. The race pigeon side of it, I, was a, I had a good friend, and he always wanted me to race. So eventually, back in the early 90s, he gave me a heap of race pigeons. He says, right, you're flying. <laughs> Pretty well 40 years I've been racing pigeons now. It's in them to know where home is. When they're of age, we take them away progressively longer long. I take them five kilometres, 15 kilometres. And as they get used to coming back from more time on the wing, that's how they get to know. And then we put them in the first race, which is about 100 kilometres. The, the standard of judging in comparison to dogs horses or anything else is basically the same. The judge has to have a very good knowledge of the breed and then they are judged according to a standard sheet which has 100 points if the bird is perfect. It's not just, okay, as a show on next weekend, I better start thinking about getting them ready. Birds ready for the show next year it starts right now. It's not just a five minute job, it's a full time job. Or you've always got to be thinking about it. You may skip a day here and there, but you've always got to be thinking about what, where it's going. You take them away from the parents when they're about three and a half, four weeks old. Whatever's in their head that tells them where home is, they've got to work out how to use it. Then you um, train them how to get back into the loft. And once they've done that, you can take them away. If you took them away before that, there's a big chance you'd lose a lot of them. Well, I feel that uh, there are less people taking up the hobby now because of other interests. And I think that, yes, the council regulations stifle nearly every hobby that there is to do with animals. I don't like councils. I find they're, they're, um, they're so backward in their thinking. They just try to run your lives. Can't do what you want. Way of the world, I suppose. The younger generation uh, to do with pigeons and poultry is fading away, but 20 years ago, a lot of us, like people my age, were a lot younger, and there was a lot more fanciers showing pigeons, but a lot of them now are quite elderly. And I find that uh, if you're 40 year old showing pigeons, you're quite young. The Australian National Pigeon Association, which is an organisation that, that I actually, in 1980, I was an inaugural president, I was president for the first 10 years. I'm no longer a member. I said, can I have a look at the basic age of people showing pigeons and racing pigeons? I said, they're all over 60. They don't know about this online stuff. They don't want to know anything like that. Well, let's make it easier for them. But the later ones have decided that's the way it's going to be. They've just had the worst national show in Melbourne since 1980. The worst one. Because of all this. So instead of arguing or carrying on anymore, I just backed away. You know, we might have three or four people pass away a year. We'd be lucky to get one new member a year. So we are going backwards, aren't we? Matter of maths. When my wife passed away, I, I think I was lucky I had pigeons. I needed these guys, not so much the racing pigeons, I needed these guys, the Fandales. They were what saved me. They were part of me, been part of me since I was a kid. I have a very good relationship with my son. Daddy says, I'm going to race pigeons. 
and uh, we, we, get, we race in partnership now. He handles the breeding side of it and I handle the racing side of it. And so many people would have loved to have their sons race pigeons with them and show pigeons, so I'm a very fortunate man. This, this stud of fantails here has been in the hands of three people since 1919. Now, three years' time is, is 2019. Now, I've made him make sure he keeps this stud together. If I happen to, something happens to me, to keep this stud of pigeons together will be 100 years unheard of. You do lose some every now and then, unfortunately, but you now there's some aren't good enough. There's um, falcons out there too. And what happens with the pigeons, and of course our falcons, they really knock them around. Pigeon gets knocked in the sky, he'll go down. He'll sit in the tree or sit in the grass. He'll sit there all day. And it takes a special pigeon to get up next morning to come home. That's what the heart is. It'll come back to where it was, I think. Especially when you see European countries that were behind the Iron Curtain, like Poland and Czechoslovakia and China. They've gone mad on it because they weren't allowed to have them. It was something the government didn't allow, but now they can. They've gone crazy on spending big money on buying birds and racing for big money. They love to fly. You exercise them, they fly all day. That's what they're bred for, flying. In one way, you could say they got freedom from it, yeah. The best thing about racing pigeons is I, I sit here in my backyard waiting for them, and I look up in the sky, and I, just, I see this pigeon coming in. It peels its wings back and straight in onto the landing board. Yeah, and that's the feeling, it's home.